Uh, first, let me offer my respects to all Kadambaka Maharaja's uh, disciples. I know how difficult it is on these days. Um, and all glories to His Holiness Kadamba Khan Maharaj. I first met Maharaj when I returned from the USA in the 1990s. Years later, I was running down the stairs in Mayapur and actually crashed right into him, apologizing for the incident and explaining I was on my way to a meeting, he smiled and inquired which one. When I replied a special meeting for Srila Prabhupada disciples, he replied, oh, the best meeting of all. Over the many years since then, we have spoken on many subjects and have taught, um, I have sought his advice, whether here or in India, he always took the time. Uh, years ago, he actually presented me in one of his first CDs and asked me to give him my give him uh, my opinion of the CD. Of course, I just laughed at the ludicrous request. After witnessing experiencing many of his kirtans in Mayapur, where we danced for hours on end, his humility and easy approachable nature made you always feel safe and comforted as a friend. He was visiting New Govardhan on a time of my mother's passing. That morning I called him at the farm and asked if he could please give uh, prayers for my mother. It was about to give Srimad Bhagavatam class. I was later informed that he had got everybody to chant and went on to discuss the significance of devotees' parents. That afternoon, as the full moon rose, garlanded with deity garlands, and 10 minutes after she had sipped Chautamrita, she left. I sent a message to Maharaj of her passing because he had spoken about her before. She had met, received a garland and met Srila Prabhupada um, and to leave, to get Maharaj's blessings on that day eased the burden of the, her loss. Hari Naman surfaced on New Year's Eve along with Ratha Yatra with the conga line as he, the kirtan exploded with the fireworks was a cherished memory for me. I will be forever grateful to him Sorry, for his kindness, his friendship, which over the years actually grew, and the kirtans he delivered with a smile of love for all around him, and the wave of devotees celebrating the glories of the holy name coming from his mouth. My head at your my head at your feet always, Sukladasi. Jai's Holiness Kadambakana Maharaj Ki. <clears throat> so I had the great fortune of knowing Maharaj from um, basically after I joined in the 80s. He used to be a Grihasta. He used to travel and preach. Uh, he was based in Australia and he used to come to different temples. He used to come to our temple in Sydney and give like amazing Sunday feast classes. And uh, so I would see him over the years from time to time. And then, then uh, he took sannyas. And uh, I remember one memorable occasion, he came to uh, the Rathiatra in Sydney we had at uh, Bondi Beach. Cart was built by uh, Jamni Jai Prabhu. And Maharaj was leading the Rathiyatra Kirtan for hours and hours up to midnight, one o'clock in the morning. Had all of us uh, dancing and he was dancing ecstatically. He just kept the Kirtan going. And uh, wherever, whenever we saw Maharaj, he was always, had so much taste for chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Rathiyatras, Harinam Sanctan, Kirtans in the temple preaching the glories of the holy name and uh, it was uh, a taste that he it was very spontaneous and full of enthusiasm and even in his older age he was very uh, just like chanting and dancing like a young a young man so this is very attractive very attractive quality of his And uh, he was, Maharaj was dearly loved by not only his disciples, which he had about maybe a thousand, 
disciples. He has about a thousand disciples, but also many of his uh, God brothers and well wishers. I wasn't directly initiated by him, but a few years ago I asked him if I could take Shiksha, if he could be my Shiksha guru, and he accepted me. I married his uh, disciple, Jester Devi Dasi. So that way I got to get more of his association. I was very fortunate. He, uh, he came to my house a few times over the last few years and we had amazing uh, rocking kirtans and wonderful classes. Um, I think one of those um, kirtan classes came up on YouTube the other day. So he was considered by many to be one of the, the best, uh, best preachers, one of the best preachers in ISKCON. He had a wonderful style of preaching, uh, his, his wit and his humour and amazing stories and his knowledge, very erudite knowledge of the scriptures and his deep realisations. This was all very attractive in his, his style of presenting the philosophy. And he was not just one of those armchair philosophers, but he was like a general fighting on the front lines, a real street fighter taking the Sangatan army out of many victorious battles, so many Rathiatras as we've heard all around the world, so many thousands and thousands of hours of Harinam on different Harinams in so many different cities, Rathiatras, Kirtans in the temple. And uh, as many devotees can testify that he was very victorious over Maya in his preaching exploits on the front lines. One time, uh, must have been about 1999, Prama Karunapu was there. We went to a music festival at Krupo. Was that 1999, 2000, around then? And it was uh, one of those uh, techno music festivals. And practically everyone was completely drugged off their mind. And Maharaj, very fortunately, Krishna arranged him to have the stage, position on the stage for hours and hours. Right? It was hours, many hours. And uh, many of the people were just slight in their intoxicated state, just really, you know, absorbed in uh, dancing and chanting along with his kirtan. And the only prasadam we had there was halaba, and we had a huge line lining up all day long. <coughs> so that was a, a wonderful experience. I was listening to some of the memories from uh, his disciples in Vrindavan, and one of the devotees, his disciples, was talking about his different achievements over the years. Many of us may not know the extent of his different uh, wonderful achievements in serving Srila Prabhupada and expanding the movement. So he actually joined in Vrindavan and he was involved in cooking there amongst other services. And after a few years he came to Australia and for a number of years, I'm not sure how many years, but he was... Uh, he collected a lot of Lakshmi for the movement, engaged in a lot of preaching programs. He was a Grihastra at the time. And then after that, he, he went to Mayapur between about 1980 and 85. For five or six years, he was in charge of the uh, Prabhupada Samadhi project. And this uh, disciple who was speaking about his glories was saying that uh, he was working tirelessly, tirelessly around the clock from six in the morning till eight o'clock at night, seven days a week for about six years straight to, um, to build up the uh, Maya, Maya Por Samadhi. So he was basically the main man in charge of that whole project. And Mr. Bodhi was saying that actually the plans for the Maya Por Prabhupada Samadhi were lost at one point. And he was stating that ordinarily, you know, if the plans were lost, and this was halfway through the building, if the plans were lost before the building was started, you could always you know, draw up a new set of plans. But just imagine the plans were lost, the building was already halfway completed, and yet he managed by Krishna's grace, Krishna empowering him to, uh, without those plans, to complete the project. And right at the end of that, uh, project, he was uh, called to Vrindavan to be the temple president there, and apparently at the time, in the early 90s, 
there was a lot of uh, gundas, and a lot of them were living in at Maraj. Uh, he knew of like 20 gundas living in the private guest house, about 20 gundas. And uh, this disciple was saying that some of them, you know, could be seen in the guest house like throwing up bullets. So there was a lot of criminals there, but he was very strong and very heavy. And uh, he managed to um, clean up a lot of the, the nonsense that was going on there. And of course, he, 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 you know, he even got shot himself. And by Krishna's mercy, he was able to recover. It's an amazing story in itself. <clears throat> and then as we, uh, as we know in the late 90s, he took sannyas and uh, he expanded the, the preaching in many places all around the world, many different countries in Europe, and of course the, the King's Day Parade in, in Amsterdam, very famous preaching event for the devotees. He was heading that up for many, many years. You know, all day Harinam, so many hundreds of devotees. Prashadam distribution, book distribution in a big, big way. And of course, his, you know, his favorite preaching in South Africa, Soweto, Rathiatra, many different preaching uh, fields here opened up there. And I don't know the story about, so much the story about the Spanish farm, but apparently he was very instrumental in saving that project. And of course, as we see on the table out here, he's uh, written pro prolifically many, many books and uh, CDs which he's distributed many of, and uh, so there's many more available for those of you who haven't acquired those already. Beautiful books, beautiful uh, kirtans and bhajans on the CDs. So yeah, he was always known, and this is a one uh, way I, in which I was very attracted to Maharaj, he was very, um, his kirtans had a very unique style. Wonder, so many wonderful tunes and the way he was so enthusiastic and just rocking the kirtan and just getting everyone to dance when we had those home programs a few years ago practically the house was felt like it was going to collapse it's like so many you know hundred or so devotees like jumping up and down for hours on end along with Maharaj's kirtan and his class is very attractive in the way he presented the philosophy in a very clear and succinct way Right till the end of life, we see practically to the last days, Maharaj was leading amazing kirtans and giving wonderful classes and giving his association to uh, his disciples and his well wishes. And uh, Maharaj, he, he stated that his legacy was that his disciples should be doing, should try to do something wonderful to push on the, the preaching of the Krishna consciousness movement. So, of course, we can't imitate Maharaj, but we can try and follow in his footsteps and imbibe his mood and see how we can uh, serve him, serve his legacy by trying to do something wonderful, pushing on the, the Harinam Sangatan, which is so dear to him. He's always talking about book distribution, prashadam distribution, festivals, rathiyatras. So all these ways in which Maharaj was uh, very inspired to Please, Srila Prabhupada, and push on the Christian consciousness movement, we can also try to uh, do something in a substantial way to, to glorify Maharaj. Uh, there was uh, one story I heard from one of his disciples. No, we always used to see that Maharaj was very strict with his son, always there for Mongolati, every day without fail whether he was you know, sick or not. Even, you know, in his, even though his body was riddled with cancer, he was still you know, there out, and out in the, the paragrams in the last few months and going to the temple programs. So one devotee said one time he was, uh, he was quite sick and he said, I better not attend Mongolati tomorrow, otherwise I'll probably get very sick. So this devotee thought that you know, his disciple thought that, well, I, I probably won't go to Mongolati, I'll come a little bit late. So when he got up, uh, he went to Mongolati, he was a little bit late, maybe 15 minutes late, and he said, who should be leading Mongolati? 
Maharaj's payment, Lady Mangalati. <clears throat> So, so I'll just finish by stating that so we should we can try and uh, take up marriage's legacy by regularly attending the temple programs, doing being engaged in some sort of preaching regularly, developing uh, deep relationships with devotees in the six uh, through the six loving exchanges, always looking for opportunities for service always being immersed in, in Christian consciousness. And although Maharaj is physically left, we still have his Vani, which is everlasting, his Vani association. So we should make a point of regularly uh, associating with him through his classes, through his kirtans, through association with his disciples like this. And this way we can always feel his, his presence. So, His Holiness Kadamba Kana Maharaj Ki. Namo Om Vishnu Buddhaya Krishna Krishna Buddhaya Shri Mary Kadamba Kana Swami. My name is Yadunandan Das, disciple of Kadamba Kana Maharaj. I think I said to my wife, just, I'm going to get one sentence in before I start crying. So. Uh, bear with me. It's the duty of the disciple to <sighs> to try to glorify the spiritual master. Maybe come on, actually, you can go for this. I can't get on the ground because of my growing belly. I, w I said I wasn't going to talk, but. <laughs> We're both as bad as each other when it comes to stuff like this. Um, but yeah, we've known Maharaj a very long time. Now I think we, well, I'm not quite sure when Yadu first met him because he was around quite a while before me, but I think, I think it was 2008 that I met him. And um, I still remember the first time I met him. Um, there had been many sannyasis have come through over the past year, but um, he had yet, he wasn't here yet, and so um, I remember eagerly waiting because I'd heard lots from Gunamani about um, Maharaj, and I was very excited. So I remember it was like a nighttime um, evening class, and I remember sitting in a temple waiting for him to arrive, not really knowing what to expect. And all of a sudden, in Melbourne, they have these like wooden doors that like double doors open, and all of a sudden, I heard the doors like pop open. I turned, <laughs> turned around and it's just like the biggest grin on his face, just like so happy and he just, you know, he just lights up the room. Like everyone says, whenever you see him, he just has this energy about him that you just can't help but smile. I remember he sat down and he, um, as Alal and Af said, you know, he sang Jai Radha Madhava then with his personal spin on the tune and it's like you just feel like, he just transported to the spiritual world immediately and it was just, yeah, and then he gave such a funny class. Like, he has such a humour about him, but he's so deep as well and he just knows how to blend that mix of make you laugh but also lots of deep realisation and, um, you know, his knowledge of such is so amazing and it's just the perfect blend to really engage you. And I remember, um, you know, and I, I've had quite a few darshans with him and he's just so approachable and he's, um, I just always felt really just comfortable around him and um, yeah, he just makes you feel like you can just be you and you don't have to, um, yeah, you just, you just feel like that loving fatherly energy and he, he's just always supported us so much, you know, he, he came to our wedding, which was just a coincidence, he happened to be there at the time, but I remember asking him if he would like to come the night before and like with his cheeky grin, he said, of course, but you know, it's bad luck for a sannyasi to come to a wedding. I said, oh, that's okay. <laughs> so he came and it was nice, he got to meet our parents and 
um, yeah, just so many nice exchanges over the years and so many nice kirtans and classes and darshans and, you know, then we met him up here when we moved up here and we hadn't seen him for quite a long time and I remember feeling a bit nervous because I hadn't seen him for a long time but straight away it was just like, you know, those friends or mentors you have that it's like no time, it feels like no time had passed and I just immediately just felt just really safe and comfortable and you could just tell he just really cared and he was just so happy to see us and um, yeah just so supportive and encouraging and yeah I just think um, yeah and he's just someone you know when you think of someone who's just so he embodies so much amazing qualities of Lord Chaitanya with he's just so merciful and compassionate and he just has that amazing taste for the holy name that, you know, I could only dream of having and... Oh, no, no. I've lost it over. Uh, I remember being in a Sunday feast class in Melbourne, uh, 2003 I think it was, and Kamala Maharaj was giving a class and right at the end he said, so if anybody has any questions, please ask them now and I will smash you. You know, and he had a big smile on his face and everybody just laughed. But he was serious, he would smash it. Uh, uh, I had a lot of difficulty in Melbourne after a certain amount of time and uh, wasn't getting much encouragement. <coughs> and uh, Guru Dave called me into his room. <laughs> and I think I'll pass it back to Kamala. Uh, Guru Dave called me into his room. He was one of the only voices to... Um, so I'm not a disciple, but I'm married to Maharaj's manager. Um, so I got to see a little bit of the different dynamic between being a disciple and just you know, somebody else. And I think a lot of people, if they see their spiritual master, I see it with my own spiritual master, how different that relationship can sometimes be. But um, I think sometimes it's good to also see the human, because as a spiritual master, you have this obligation and duty. So you don't always see the personality of the natural personality as much. Um, I certainly see that for myself. Sometimes when I see my own spiritual master, it's interesting to see the dynamic that they have with other people but uh, so he's always been very friendly to me um even though he's far superior in so many ways he's older he's you know a superior devotee he's been around for so much longer but yet he always treated me very friendly um and like there was one time i was sitting there weeding the garden and he sort of at the temple and he sort of with a sort of cheeky smile on his face he said kill her and I sort of, you know, I'd been, of course, thinking about this myself. And I said, well, in the sastras, weeds are often used as an analogy. And in all those analogies, the weed is meant to be pulled out and removed. So if I don't pull out, the, if you shouldn't pull out weeds, then the analogy is sort of, of, you know, meaningless. And he sort of nodded as though that was a sort of reasonable answer. Um, another time we were... Uh, Maharaj just arrived and we bumped into a um, another devotee who was sort of following a little bit but he had a t-shirt of liquor land or something or other like that on there and he sort of pointed at it and, and he said to me I'm Balaram's friend <laughs> so you know he, he was not judgmental he was um, but he, and he was joking you know very humorous and another time I was serving Maharaj as a brahmachari and I don't think I was married at that time or together and but we were just serving and most of Maharaj with another I think there were two of us and they um most of Maharaj's disciples at that time were women and so they were so he didn't have any disciples to serve him personally so that's why we, as brahmacharis we were serving him lunch and you could see that they, were, they would come in and they'd look in and ask if there was anything else and he had finished eating and and he sort of looked over at the door and he said they're all waiting out there aren't they and i said yes Maharaj. 
and, and a little little more conversation shortly after he said eat to the brahmachari to the me and the other brahmachari and we sort of weren't really comfortable you know eating in front of maharaj and so he sort of ignored it a little bit and then a few minutes later he said eat and we again sort of looked a little uncomfortable and ignored us you know didn't follow the instruction and then a few minutes later he stood up walked to the door slammed the door and said now eat you know <laughs> so what could we do we, we sat there we ate, ate most of what was left which all the disciples out in the hallway were obviously wanting so we you know we ate and then we came out with all the plates which were now empty and all the maha plates which were now more or less empty and and you know my wife and the other female disciples were like looking where's all the food gone you know so it was very personal and very um you know you know very friendly and i was also seeing you know a lot of the photos of on a, on a different side of Maharaj with Jayadweta Maharaj and he reminded me of one time we were in Mayapur and it was the Vyasa Puja of Jayadweta Maharaj and so Kadamba Kanana Swami of course was one of the disciples um, and so at the time of the homages of course other disciples gave but I was shocked well, not really shocked but I was very impressed by the detail when in Maharaja's homage about how deeply he meditated on his spiritual master's glories, how deeply, you know, he went into it and analyzed the personality of Jaidwaita Maharaj. Um, and just really, it really struck me just how much he must have, he was meditating and thinking about his spiritual master, not just the things he did and his achievements, but really about his personality, why he did things, what he did, and how he thought. And, you know, he spoke for maybe 30 minutes or something or other, maybe. You know, he spoke for a long time, and he didn't repeat himself. Just going into, you know, so, and it wasn't so much, you know, Jaid Vader Maharaj did this, and Jaid Vader Maharaj, is, you know, and look at what he's achieved. But he was going into about his personality and, you know, so much. And it really impressed me how deeply as a disciple he was and how much he meditated and deeply meditated on the glories of his own spiritual master and you know not as a disciple of him but you know thinking to myself of how much should i be thinking of my own spiritual master and also i suppose for you how much how deeply we should think about our spiritual master not just thinking oh he did this oh he did that but his personality why he thought how he thought you know what you know, what sort of devotion he had. Um, I think that was very inspiring for me. Anyway, I think that's... Uh, she was a Govinda Dasi, Gorasunda, Mukunda Maharaj, all of these disciples were the first disciples of Srila Prabhupada. So Gorasunda Maharaj, uh, not Maharaj, but Gorasunda passed this morning, uh, uh, very early this morning, and he was Srila Prabhupada's first servant. So I'm, I know that uh, Gadam Maharaj, Gadam Maharaj would I want everyone to put their hands in the air and say Hari Bo to send Gorasunda on his way. Thank you. Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Hari Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatham Itam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Harijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamscha Vishakam 
नमः ओम विष्णु पदाया कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांता स्वामी नित्यनामिने हमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गोगवानी प्रचारिने देवसेश शुन्यवारी अष्टाध्यादेशिकारिने नमः ओम विष्णु पदाया कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति सिद्धांता सरस्वती तिनामिने श्री पार्श्वानवी देवी दायिकाया विभाव दाये कृष्ण संबंधा विज्ञाना दायने कबे नमः मधुरुज्वला प्रेमाद्या श्रीरूपानुगा अपिदा श्रीगोरकरुणा शक्ति विग्रहाया नमोस्तुते नमस्ते गोरवानी श्रीमर्ताये दीनाचारिने दुपानुगा विरुद्धा पिसितंता वंता आरिने नमो गोरकिशोराया सक्षात बैराग्यमर्ताये विप्रलंबा संभोले अदंबुजाया ते नमः नमो अक्तिबिनोराया सच्चिरानंद नामिने गोर शक्ति स्वरूपाया उपनुगा परायते गोर विभावा भूमेश्वर निर्देशता सज्जना प्रिया वैष्णवा सर्वभोमा श्री जगन्नाथाया ते नमः अंशकल्पतरुभ्यश्चा विपासिनुभ्यश्चा चुपानं भावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः नमो महाबद्धन्याया कृष्ण प्रेम बदायते कृष्णाया कृष्ण चैतन्या अम्मे गोर जुशे नमः अंचतत पात्मकम् कृष्णम् भक्तरूपस्वरूपम् भक्तावतारम् भक्ताक्यम् नमामि भक्ति शक्ति कम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु ये नमंदो जगत पते गोपेशा गोपिका कंधा आरकांत नमोस्तुते जायतम् तो जायतम् सुरतो अंगो मम मंदमते कटी मत सर्वस्वा धाम भोजो राधमाधन मोहनो दिव्याद विंदरन्या कल्पा रूमदहा श्रीमद् रत्नागरा सिंहासनस्तो श्रीमद् राधा श्रीलगोविंद देवो प्रस्ताली भी सेव्यमानो स्मरानि श्रीमन् रसा वसंभि बंशीवता अतस्तिता कर्षण वेनु स्वनेर्गोपीर गोपिनाथ श्रीयेशुना अत्तकंचनगोरंगी Radhe Vrindavaneshwari, Vrishabhano Sute Devi, Paramami Hari Priye, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Adonichananda, 
Divine Grace, say Sabakta Vedanta Swami Shalom Prabhupada Ki. Jaya Vishmahad, Paramahamsa Parivakacharya, Sadhava Sada Shishmad, His Holiness, Kadama Kadamaraj, Shilagurudev Ki. Ananta Kodi Vaishyam in the Ki. His Grand Founder Acharya, His Divine Grace, say Sabakta Vedanta Swami Shalom Prabhupada Ki. Namah Acharya, Shalom Haridas Ko Ki. Prem Sekha Ho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunit Jananda. Shri Advaita Gadadha Shivasati Gauda Bhakti Vindaki. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Go Govina Shama Kundu Radha Kundu Gari Govadam Ki. Vrindavanam Ki. Maya Podam Ki. Ganga Maya Ki. Yamuna Maya Ki. Tulsa Deva Ki. Samaveda Bhakti Vindaki. Harinam Sankatan Ki. Priyapadanga Bhukti Shibishan Ki. Vishadam Dishibishan Ki. Yu Govadam Dham Ki. The Divine Memorial Ceremony of His Holiness Kadamba Kanana Maharaj Ki. Yeah. Kadamba Kanana Maharaj Ki. Yeah. Go Prabhupada Hari Krishna. All glories to some devotees. Hari Krishna. All glories to some devotees. Hari Krishna. All glories to some devotees. Hari Krishna. All glories to Shishi Gunchi Goranga. All glories to Shila Prabhupada Shila Gurudev Ki.
भगवान की जाए राम राज की जाए गोप्रेम नंदी